This is the second part in the course, complete training in creating a website using Google Sites. If you don't really know how Google Sites works and you wanna learn, watch the video that's on the screen now. That will really help you to get started and then come back to this video. Because in this video, I'm gonna look at some of the more advanced features like working with the galleries, like working with the uh, drop-down menu system and a number of other features that have now been introduced into Google Sites. Really hope you like the video, and as always, if you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate if you did any of those things because it helps me to boost my channel and the algorithm. Let's get started. One last thing, many people ask me how I make my videos. I use Camtasia. If you want to try it out, there's a link to test it for free in the description. You can also buy it with a discount. I've provided a link there. And there's also a free six part course that will take you through everything in how Camtasia works. And I'll also put that in the description. Now, one of the most important updates is how to create drop down menus and drop down menus that function the way that we expect when we're working on the internet. Now, I'm gonna quickly explain what I mean by that by just showing you an example, and then I'm gonna show you how you can do drop down menus in Google Sites. So if you look at my webpage, you'll see that there are pages that you can visit. Okay, you can click on them and visit them, but then you'll also see that sometimes I've got a drop down menu. Now, where you've got a drop down menu, you don't want this to be clickable. You don't want this to bring you to a page. What you want it to do is that when you roll over it or when you click on it, it then opens up the options. So you don't actually want any content there, not like on a page like this where you don't have a drop down menu and you want to go straight to the content. No, what you really want this to do is to simply open up the drop down menu and that can either be by clicking on it sometimes or just rolling over it and then the drop down menu. So that's a special feature in Google Sites. It's important to understand that because drop down menus work slightly different than from standard pages which take you to content. And I'm gonna now show you exactly how to do that. So I'm coming back to this web page that we've been developing from part one of this course and we're gonna come over to pages. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new page but this time, or this button here, we're gonna come up and actually choose new menu section. Click on that, now click into here, and I'm gonna give this the menu section name Google, okay? Products. And I can either do it, do it probably better to put a space in there like that, and I'm gonna click on done. So now what we've got is a basically what we call, as I said, a menu item that's not clickable. But what this will do is when we add the drop down menu items into here, when you roll over, those will become available. Let me show you how you do that now. So the first thing that I can do is any pages that I've created, I could now put those underneath that menu item. And so obviously Google Docs, if I just grab that with my mouse and move it and drop it here, you can notice that this is slightly different in terms of visually how it looks to show you that this is a menu item. So I've now added my Google Docs page into my menu items. I'm gonna do the same with Google Slides, just holding it down, bringing it right up and dropping it in. So we now got two menu items. And in fact, we can put the YouTube videos in there because YouTube is also part of Google. So again, I'm gonna hold down and I'm gonna now drop so first of all, we've now got three items added into our section called Google, Pro called Google Products. So if I come over now to Google Products, look what happens. I roll over, no, you can't click on here, there's no content here, but we've now got the three items. So that's one way of adding menu items. Now there is another way, and that is if you just simply come over to the menu item and you click here, and then you can click on add sub page and I'm gonna write one, I'm gonna call this Google. Okay, so we've got Google Slides and Google Docs and I'm gonna call this Google uh, Jamboard, for example. And then I'm gonna click on done and now we will have a section called Google Jamboard. Actually, Google Jamboard has now been uh, pulled out of the market. But anyway, you get the idea that we can simply uh, add menu items by just rolling over the 
the menu item and then adding a sub page. So remember, when you want to add a menu item, you come down to the plus here, but you don't choose new page, you don't choose the bottom one, you come up and you click on new menu section. These are called menu sections, and we've now got a menu section, and as you can see, we've got four different pages within that, or four different sub-menu items within that uh, menu section. Now I want to show you another feature that's very popular uh, when I do the training. And if we come over, let's, in fact, we've already got some pages here where we can add this content. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our section on Google Jamboard, okay, which is empty. And then we're going to come over to insert. And the one that we're going to do is called uh, a collapsible group. Now I want to explain how collapsible group works. Basically what it means is you have here the title and then you have here the text. So I'm going to put in a title here first of all and I'm going to call this all about Google Jamboard. Okay and what I need here now is to add the text. So I'm just going to copy a text from anywhere and just paste it in just to demonstrate how this works. So all I do is paste in some text Okay, simple as that. We can do multiple ones of this and I will do a few more examples. And what I'm gonna do now is just to simply show you how that will work and the best way to do that is to come to the preview window. So I'm gonna click here and you'll see that when you come to this page, all you've got is the title. But if you click, the text will open underneath. And I really like this way of working, particularly if you've got a lot of text. So let's do a second example of that just because then you'll really get to see how it looks. So first of all, we're going to leave the preview and come back in and coming down to this collapsible menu again, we need to click on insert. Okay, so make sure you're on the right page, click on insert, click on collapsible group because you're going to create a second one. And I'm going to call this, for example, projects. And again, I'm just going to paste in the text. And of course, the text could be a lot longer. So just to sort of show you what I mean, I'm going to paste some more text and to more text just to demonstrate how this really works when you've got a lot of text on the screen, okay? And again, what we're gonna do now is simply come over to preview and you'll notice now you have two items and if we click on projects again, you'll notice it will open up and we've got all of that text to read. So this could be a really nice way of obviously laying out content when you've got a lot of text and basically making it easy for people to work out what they want to read and then to open up uh, and read the text. Now another feature that's very popular when I do the training is looking at galleries and there are various ways of doing this. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm actually going to click on pages. I'm going to click and generate a new page, just a new simple page and we call this gallery and I'm going to click on done. So we're on that page already. We're going to come over to insert and you'll notice that you've got a lot of actually quite a few different ways that we can work here. For example, we've got this thing called blocks at the top and these can work really well because they're kind of predefined layouts of images with text, etc. So just to do a simple example, we've got two images here, three images, four images if we want. I'm just going to do two images. And all you need to do is click here and you've got various ways of grabbing an image. You can upload an image or you may already have the image on your Google Drive. Now I'm going to upload the images, but remember you can link in lots of different ways. You can even have a gallery of YouTube videos, which can be really nice as well. I'm just going to do images. So I'm going to click on upload and come over to my pictures and just going to grab a couple of pictures. It doesn't really matter what I put in. So I'm just going to put in that one there. And then I'm going to put here, for example, our office. Notice that I can also put some text and let's do another one here. And again, we'll do upload and we're going to choose another office where we'll perhaps do this one here and we'll click on that and click on open oh sorry i've done the wrong one same one doesn't matter though and i'm going to call this one our new office and again we could add some text underneath if we want so these blocks are really nice because they're kind of nicely laid out and remember what you add into that block doesn't necessarily have to be an image it could be for example a video from youtube 
Just a super quick break from the video. If you do like what you're seeing and you want more free videos, come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads of stuff on the opening page. And also we've got these drop down menus now, the very popular AI technologies. I specialize in making videos for language teachers and language students, showing them how they can use technology to incorporate into their teaching and learning. If you want to sign up to the newsletter and that way you'll keep updated with all of the latest videos that I upload as well as the free webinars that we run, but also there is a free mini course, 14 part video course on using technology in language teaching and language learning. And there are no tricks, it's completely free and nearly all the technologies that I suggest to you are free as well. And I'm really going to show you some of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel. Finally, if you want to, you can have live training with me. It costs just $6 a month. And for that, we meet online once a month and we do a very interactive training session where we deep dive on one or two technologies and we talk about how to use them and we do activities so that we can really understand how they work. Now nearly everyone that's on my Patreon is a language teacher and most of them are English teachers. If you want to find out more about Patreon just click on the button there and you can watch a video it gives you a lot more detail and as well as the webinar once a month the webinar you also get three additional videos, training videos from me with no ads, where I highlight lots of other technologies that I don't cover in my YouTube channel. And remember, everything that I do is around language teaching and language learning and using technology to impact on both of those areas. Now I did actually make a small mistake there because what I did was I added the gallery into the section on Google products and obviously gallery is not a Google product. So if I come over to the pages, very, very simple to just to deal with this, just grab that and put it into its own menu item. So it now becomes a menu item in itself and now you can see it there on the side. Now I'm going to actually add in now another page. So I'm going to click here and we'll click on new page and this one Again, I'm just going to call this pictures. I'm just going to show you another way of, and there are several ways, as I've said, of adding images in. Again, we're going to come on to insert. Okay. So to make sure I don't make that same mistake again, I'm going to click on home. Okay, so once I'm on the home page and I come down to plus here and click on new page again, I'm just going to add a new page this time. And this time I'm going to call it pictures. And you will notice that if I click on done, that will become a separate uh, page. There it is. I can reorder this by the way. All right, so let's say for example, I want pictures towards the end here. I can just grab that and pull it down and say, well, I want it underneath Padlet and it will be placed there okay but we've got the pictures now open on the screen we're going to click on the insert and this time we're going to come down to something called image carousel so we're going to click on that and what we can do in this image carousel is add up images and that again it will work like a carousel now you have to have a minimum of two images so I'm going to click here and very quickly we're going to do this so I'm going to add an image so again we're going to upload an image from the internet and I'll just do it with the same images so I'm going to click on one and then I'm going to click on two because I'm going to need another one So upload image click on two and we'll add three images into this carousel click on three upload image remember you can grab an image that you've already uploaded into your Google site so we've got three now and I'm going to click on insert and we should now have a carousel now let's actually see how this carousel is going to work and what I will do is I'm just going to open it up nice and big and so we're going to come into preview and you'll see how the carousel works so the carousel works like this you've got an image and of course you can move through to the next one and to the next one and you also have this button system here which also allows you to if I remember rightly or maybe I'm wrong there or maybe you don't it, it would it would just show you that just shows you which is the current image out of the three that are available I thought you could click on that you can't so a carousel is a nice way again of adding in lots of images into your Google sites website
Now there are a lot of features in Google Sites and I won't be able to go through them all. I'm focusing really on the ones that I particularly like using. And another one, I'm just gonna click over here onto my Padlet section. And another one I really like to use, if I just bring down my cursor, and I'm gonna click here, so I've kind of activated this area. And then what I'm gonna do in Insert, I'm gonna click on Divider. And it produces like a little line here. And I find this really useful, often I use it double. So I do a double one. If I'm gonna add some different content and I just wanna separate the content particularly for example if you're embedding multiple pages so let's imagine now that at this stage here I want to embed another video in or another padlet then obviously I would click again on plus and now go to the embed and add the code in to whatever it is I want to embed and of course it would be really clearly separated by these two lines so Often when I'm working with text or with images, I use the dividers to separate the content and make it really, really clear, um, you know, where perhaps the first section is in it, something embedded, then in the second section there's something else embedded, etc. And of course, it's always a good idea to write some text first if you've got something else, you know, so this might be Padlet number two. So I'd write Padlet two and uh, to make it absolutely clear and then embed the Padlet and maybe the same here I would have done at the top is that I would have added in some text here right at the top uh, calling it Padlet number one. So that's a good idea as well just to really help to make your site as clear as possible. Okay, really hope you like that video. And as I said, if you can come over to teachertrainingvideos.com, loads more free videos. Remember, if you wanna sign up to the newsletter, there is the 14 part free mini course. There's no tricks. I highlight some of the best free technologies on the internet for delivering language teaching and language learning. And of course, you can also join me on Patreon if you want live sessions with me, if you wanna meet me online and actually have direct training with me, then the best thing to do is to join me on Patreon. And if you click on this video here, you can get all of the information. And finally, if you want to contact me, scroll down, you can contact me on the website if you want me to do some training with your organization, run a workshop, run a conference, or even if you want me to help you to build content for your online course, which is something I've done a lot of work on. Or maybe it's because you want to build up a YouTube channel or you just want one-on-one -on -one training in using a technology like Camtasia. I am actually a recommended Camtasia trainer and I do a lot of work in Camtasia. Then you can contact me by just clicking on here and send me an email and I'll get back to you. I'm gonna leave now some more content on the screen, some more videos that you might find interesting and thank you very much.